Hello, my creative friend, Olga Sabi here, and welcome to new fluid art tutorial. Today, I want to create a painting full of the energy of one of the most vibrant and beautiful color combinations, black, white, red, and gold. And for my technique, I want to expand a little bit on the Breaking Through the Limits series. So in all of my previous paintings, I have been using the ring to create a 3D look of flow going through the ring. Today, I want to create not one flow, but three, and all of them will be dancing around this ring. So let's see how it turns out, and without further ado, let's get started. Therein Hearts is a secret message for this painting, and I'm gonna put the ring away for now. So for my base, I have mixed black color, Mars black, with some red violet and carmine red. So this is not pure black, it has a little, it's gonna dry pretty much like black, but where it's gonna overmix with white, it's gonna have that little burgundy dark red shade. And even um, in my secret messages, you can see that it's not pure black, and I actually love adding some to my black because I think it's just a lot more interesting this way. So this is gonna be a solid color base, not multicolor today. And I'm just gonna use my spatula to move it around. Working on a large panel, this is 20 by 20 inches cradle wood panel. The base is done, and the idea for this painting is to create three flows that go sort of off the panel, that are gonna go, that are gonna dance around and go through this ring. This is gonna be a little bit of a brain twisting <laughs> technique, I think. So I wanna start by planning out my colors. Let's shape up those flows. So first one's gonna go like this. It's gonna be the second one. So it's very important that the one part, the center part of these flows is going to be inside of the ring and not just on the border, but actually quite closer to the center. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to achieve this 3D look. Okay, so I want this part to be wider, wider, wider. And the first color is carmine red. Next here I have some naphtal red. This is a more vibrant red color it's less transparent it's semi-transparent it's one of the bright vibrant reds i really like this color okay and this is the base of my flow i don't think i'm gonna be using a lot more of the color some vermilion orange but not on the entire flow just on some sections Also, I think I need some cooler uh, color. That's why I'm gonna use this pink, which is Queen Acridone Rose. This way, my flows are gonna be more, they're gonna have more volume, they're gonna look less flat because we need to have some cooler, some warmer parts in that red will look much more interesting. Finally, I wanna have some copper. Actually, not final, I also have some iridescent orange. This has been, color of the season for me, which makes sense. We're in this beautiful fall season and it's full of warm colors that have this copperish feel to them. But I have never been a huge fan of copper, but recently I've been totally rediscovering this color for myself. It's more subtle compared to gold, but it's also so beautiful. Okay, and some iridescent orange. This is the last one. Another perfect color of the season. All right. This is plenty, plenty, plenty. You need to top it all up with some white. This is looking beautiful. I only love how it looks. So now um, we're going to start blowing this out. And this is the part I, did, I think the most interesting and a little challenging for me. So first I need to only blow out those sections that are gonna be behind the ring. Then we're gonna add the ring element and then we're gonna blow out sections that are in front of the ring that come through the ring. 
so we can't blow out everything just yet. Okay, step one done. I think I'm gonna adjust some of the sections right away. Oh, this is gorgeous here. I really love pops of this clinacridone rose. I think it's perfect for this color palette. do my finger swipes right away too because once the ring is there I will not be able to do that without breaking the ring okay this is great great start so now it's important not to mess it up <laughs> need to work very carefully actually I want to blow this part a little more so in all of my previous Breaking Through Limits pours, not in all, but in most of them, I have first dipped my ring in gold or the color of the embellish embellishment element. And then I put it on the painting. But today I actually want to use it more like as a guideline. And I'm not gonna uh, dip the ring in gold. I actually, I'm gonna add gold right on the painting. But first I need to position it here and I need to do it right in the center and it definitely helps to look from above okay so now i'm gonna grab the gold and notice that i didn't add any gold inside of my floats because i want the only golden element here to be this ring so that it's even more contrasting it really pops and i'm gonna add the gold using a squeeze bottle just on the inside of my ring using it sort of as a guideline I need to be perfect, but as close to perfect as possible. Actually, if it's not perfect, it's going to make it even more interestingly shaped ring. I think to help it pop, I need to also add a couple droplets of white inside of the gold. Not everywhere, but we need to add some highlights. Definitely helps to have squeeze bottles. I think I just missed last drop, of course. Just as I'm saying how helpful it is to use squeeze bottles, I missed the area. I have already prepared the toothpick before I'm going to spin the painting, the spin the uh, ring, because I'm going to need it to pop the film, you'll see. So I like to spin my ring to get the colors moving before I lift it up. I think it creates a nice effect and I also like how it blends in the colors don't like this section here but we'll work on it after okay and now I'm gonna carefully lift it up I don't think I mentioned but this ring is an embroidery hoop amazing tool for acrylic ring as well apparently okay this is awesome see the fact that I added ring the gold inside and then spin it it created these lines that they were dragging through along with the ring. This is so cool, except for this section here, but I'm gonna fix it right now. Final step. Main objective is not to mess it up because so far it's perfect. So now I'm gonna blow out this part, this part, and this part. And I actually feel like I want to add even a little more white in these parts inside of them okay I'm kind of worried about this one because I made it too close to this part I don't want them to touch. I don't want to keep them each each flow um, separated. Be very careful with this one. I was trying to be very careful, and I ended up pulling too much gold alone. And the gold needs to stay only 
inside. I managed not to touch them, so that's a good part. It's good. It worked. It looks a bit more like a triangle now. I actually like it this way. See how the rings are... the flows are t literally breaking through. <laughs> See, I'm not sure if camera is actually picking up such details, but where my white blends into this base, it creates this beautiful color. Dark, deep, rich burgundy. I think this is a success. I will need to still look at how it dries and maybe I'll do some touch-ups, I don't know yet. So let's see how it dries. I'll see you in the next section. It is dry now, you guys. This is one impressive painting. I love the energy and I see against the light now, and metallics in here are so beautiful, this lace in here. So now, before I'm gonna cover this painting with layer of epoxy resin, I want to tidy up the ring and some of the sections where uh, flows touch the ring. And for touching up um, my ring, I'm gonna use the same color as I used as a base. Remember, this one was black mixed with some burgundy and some red, so it's not pure black. And if you ever custom mix your base, make sure you save up some for the touch-up. Save it just in case because it's very hard to mix the exact colors when the paint is already dry because once the paint is dry it does become a little darker, it shifts the sheen, so it's just it's possible but more challenging. So always when custom mixing save up that base. Okay, I think I might get back to a few areas of the ring but while my dark paint is drying I'm gonna start touching up on my reds. So, see these lines where the ring goes through the flow? They look a little broken in some areas, not everywhere. So this is where I want to touch them up. Just to make them nice and rounded and more continuous. And as always, when doing touch-ups, try to match the movement and lines of the initial flow. And of course, you can do touch-ups not only to fix something in a painting, but also to enhance it, to maybe add more details, create some nice accents, and just modify it however your heart desires. Great tools to always have around you when you're doing any type of touch-ups is some paper towel and just water. Because if you just did the line that you don't like, while it's fresh, while it's wet, you can just simply wipe it off. Like nothing ever happened. I get a lot of questions about why not just do the flow first and then paint the rings. Great question. And you can totally embellish your painting after your initial blowout or pour is dry. And I have actually done quite a few paintings like this just with different style, not with rings. But to answer your questions, I think it comes down to what look you after. If you want to create a more rounded, more geometrically perfect uh, ring or square or whichever shape you want, yeah, you can totally let the pour dry and then paint it or draw it on top. But if you are after this more fluid art look, you know, with all these imperfect lines and veins of colors blending into each other, like in this one, then it is my preference to do it during the pour, because this way the entire painting is definitely more cohesive. Just think about which look and which style you want to create for your piece. Now I'm gonna let this touch-ups dry and let me show you the very final look. Here it is all done and finished. And my husband just told me that this painting has a wow factor. I love that. Let me know what you think about this painting. And as you can tell, I covered it with a layer of epoxy resin finish. And it really looks so good with it. It really makes all the colors pop, especially those metallics, the gold and copper that's all throughout the painting. So how can you add perfect epoxy resin finish to your pieces that also has no air bubbles, no dust, and just no other flaws? I'm glad you asked, because I have the whole online course that is dedicated just to that. 
epoxy clear coat for acrylic painting and fluid art. And this Black Friday weekend, I offer a huge sale. You can save $90 with the coupon code RESINPRO90. And the sale will last for three days and only 50 seats available at this price. So whichever ends first, the sale is going to be over. And if you finally are ready to learn how to resin like a pro, how to create that perfect finish, what to do with your sides, how to add stars to your resin finish, all the safety must-haves, and really just so much more, the course is totally gem-packed with incredible information. And I'm saying this with all confidence. And I guarantee that there will not be a better deal than it is right now. So make sure to check it out. And please let me know, how do you like the outcome? How do you like the concept of, of three flows going through one ring? And would you like to see more paintings with this concept? By the way, I have quite a few videos coming with really cool embellishments. We are really gonna take that fluid painting to the next level. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Make sure to check out that sale and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.